All right, lads, welcome back to another War Thunder Vehicle review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the A4E Scooter. This is the current rank 6 premium for the Israeli tech tree and is a rather unique vehicle in game. Not only does it have a unique elongated engine cooling, which was designed to give some protection to the engine against Fox 2 missiles, but this A4E also comes with a unique loadout, which, as you'll see in the video, makes it quite potent for ground attack. But anyway, the A4E is an Israeli attacker located in the 6th rank of the Israeli Ur tree. It currently sits at battery rating 9.0 in arcade, 8.7 in realistic, and 9.3 in simulator battles. But unfortunately boys, to get your hands on this plane, you are going to have to hand out $60 or €60 Euros in actual money. But for that price, you get the plane, 15 days of premium time, as well as 2,000 Golden Eagles. So with its small frame, high bomb load, and the ability to roleplay as John McCain, is it worth handing your money over to Gaijin, or should you give this plane a pass? Well lads, if you'd like to know the answers to that question, stick around for the rest of the video. Alright lads, welcome back. The performance of the A4E isn't its standout feature, but anyway, this plane is powered by the Pratt & Whitney J52 P8A engine. Probably the first thing to note is that this engine is not an afterburner, meaning in a full up tier to 9.7, you are going to be a little bit down when it comes to power output. Anyway, it produces 3,750 kilograms of thrust, which with clean wings, will give you a rate of climb of 39.7 meters per second. But in the configuration that I use, with two air to air missiles, as well as three JDAMs, that rate of climb drops down to around 3 meters per second. This obviously isn't an issue in ground realistic battles as you get an air spawn, but if you are trying to use this jet in air realistic as a bomber or attacker, getting to the bomb sites will take a little while. But we do have a decent top speed of 1081 km per hour, and a theoretical maximum altitude of 12500 meters. In real life, the A4 was also noted for being quite a good aggressor aircraft. Basically, US planes would fight against it, simulating a Russian aircraft. This was done on low fuel, and in that setting, the A4s did have very good turn rates. But in War Thunder, we're going to be carrying like 40 minutes of fuel, as well as air to air missiles, guns, and bombs. Your turn rate is significantly worse. But the A4E does have combat, takeoff, and landing flaps, as well as air brakes. These can give you an edge in the dogfight. And the air brakes can be used to force an enemy to overshoot. Just remember, you don't have the highest thrust, so regaining the speed if you use your air brakes is going to take a while. Being a naval aircraft, we also have an arrestor gear as well as a drogue chute. The gear is obviously for carriers, and the chute is for runway landings. One thing to note with the A4E is that its wings are incredibly fragile, at least when you've got a full bomb load. Your wings will start snapping when you start pulling 8 Gs, which isn't that high to be honest and this is a lot lower if you are carrying a full bomb load. You can also only pull 3 degrees of negative G. This isn't as bad as the low positive G, but it is still noticeable. The wings will also rip at 1167 km per hour, and the gear at 437 km per hour. The combat flaps can be used quite fast though at nearly 600, and the takeoff and combat are basically the same really, so you can get quite a good turn rate if you use your combat flaps. But enough about the performance boys, let's start moving over towards the weaponry. Starting with the pilot. The first thing to note is that we only get a CCRP here. This is a constantly calculated release point. This is not to be confused with the CCIP or constantly calculated impact point, as the CCRP only really gives you a way to drop bombs from high altitude. This isn't really accurate and it is not as good as a CCIP in my opinion. We do also get an RWR in this point which is quite helpful. Mainly again in ground realistic battles, as it gives you a radar spike when you are being locked by anti-aircraft vehicles. In air realistic battles at 8.7, there aren't many aircraft which use Fox 1 missiles, so it's not really a massively useful feature in my opinion in, in that setting. But moving on to the stock weaponry, and we have the 30mm Defers. These used to be really good, but are now a little bit mediocre. They still hit very hard, but they've got a pretty low muzzle velocity, which makes them quite hard to weigh. But at batteries in 8.7, where fights usually take place at subsonic speeds, I think these guns are still pretty okay, in my opinion. 
The low velocity doesn't help when it comes to armor penetration though. So these guns are still mainly used for taking out enemy helicopters and planes. We then move on to our optional carried weapons, starting with the FAAR Mighty Mouse. These travel very fast at 701 meters per second and can penetrate 790 millimeters of armor. Can't really criticize these rockets to be honest, but you can find them at battle rating 6.0, so they aren't exactly world leading at this battle rating. Again, we do not get a CCIP, so you will have to manually aim these rockets. This makes it quite hard to get an accurate hit, but this isn't a criticism of the FAARs, it is a criticism of the plane in general. We can then also carry the Zuni Mark 32s, these are much larger than the FAARs, meaning you can carry significantly less than the Mighty Mouse. For what you lack in quantity, you arguably make up for it in quality. The Zunis have a large warhead of nearly 9 kilos of TNT, giving them 457 millimeters of penetration. These are very effective against taking out enemy tanks, but aren't really a meta at the minute, you don't really see many people using Zunis. The meta for closer support in top tier is now mainly bombs. Speaking of which, we have several to choose from. We have 250 pound bombs with an explosive radius of 5 meters, 500 pound bombs with an explosive radius of 7 meters, a 1000 pound bomb with an explosive radius of 11 meters, and a 2000 pound bomb with an explosive radius of 18 meters. This explosive radius will destroy any vehicle within that radius. So with the 2000 pound bomb, if you drop the bomb within 18 meters radius of a target, it will kill it basically. Then also have the Mark 77 Mod 4s, this is basically napalm, it's not really useful at 8.7, I don't really know why Gaijin added it, it should have been added about 4 years ago. We then come on to the reason that this plane is so effective in ground joystick battles, and that is a combination of two weapons. Up first is the AGM-62 Walleye, this contains 264 kilos of TNT, and is TV guided. We can also take along the GBU-8, this is also TV guided like the Walleye, but it contains 505 kilos of TNT, giving it a much larger explosive radius. In theory, the explosive radius of both of these weapons isn't really important, due to the TV guidance, which in theory, should give you a direct hit. In a typical ground realistic battle, I'll take one GBU-8, as well as two Walleyes, as well as two Earthworm missiles, which we'll get into shortly. Before you spawn into the plane, make sure the bomb detonation is set to zero, then press spawn. When we're actually in the air, I'd start to go into like a 15 degree climb. You want to be about 6k above the battlefield if you can. Being so high above the battlefield, one gives you cover from enemy air defenses, as well as gives you more time to loiter actually looking for targets. When you find a target, put the nose of the airplane in the vague direction towards the target, and then press the change camera key. You can then lock a target with the lock guided weapon key, and then drop the bomb with the drop bomb key. The Walleye and the GBU-8 will then guide themselves onto a target unless the enemy breaks the lock by going into cover or popping smoke. And finally we have the AM-9B. These missiles aren't great but what can you really do? This is more of a ground strike point in my opinion rather than an air fighter. So criticising the plane for not having the best air loadout isn't really that fair in my opinion to be honest. If you're going to grind out the Israeli tech tree using this plane, I'd highly recommend to use it as an attacker rather than a dedicated air to air fighter. You can take off at the start of a march, drop bombs on enemy targets, and then try to play as a pseudo fighter. That can work out, especially if you stay low at the beginning, go off to the side a little bit, and then come around behind the enemy. You can get a surprising amount of kills by firing your AM9Bs at unsuspecting players. But don't try to use this plane at the start of a match in an air to air role, you're just going to get shot down. Anyway lads, if you're looking to grind out the Israeli tech tree, then you don't really have another choice to be honest. This is the only rank 6 premium for the foreseeable future. And while it's not as sexy as some of the other rank 6 premiums in War Thunder, with the high G all aspect missiles, but I do think that the A4E is a good reliable grinder, well worth the money if you are serious about grinding out the Israeli tech tree. Anyway lads, thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. Also, be sure to let me know down below in the comments what vehicle you guys would like to see reviewed next. Finally, I'd like to say a big thank you to my YouTube members, Levi Stark, Wolfie Fly, Joseph Metcalf, Thompson013, Just Someone, Dr. Bob, Deboa LX, Tans, William Tessier, and Lola Alfonsi. Thank you very much for supporting the channel, lads, and I'll see you in the next review.